Hi, everybody. What's Happy going on? Happy Saturday. Happy now Saturday. You're probably wondering. Uh, Can you straighten the mic out? Sorry, but there we go. You're probably wondering, why are they coming out with an episode on a Saturday? Yeah. And then you're probably looking at the thing, you're like, all these other Lethal Weapon movies, what? Five, six, and seven. And you're probably seven. thinking like, weird bonus episode. This isn't a bonus episode. Our schedule's just so jam-packed. Yeah, we had to we squeeze had to, a trilogy in. Yeah, and you'll notice this one's a little shorter. It's because these movies are shorter. Yeah. That's why we lumped them in together. Um, but they, you know, they deserve to be talked about. Yeah. Yeah, so we're talking about this the... This is the Macabre Podcast Universe. Yeah, it's a podcast that exists to prove people wrong when they say... Sequels are never better than the originals. And we're finishing up our series on Lethal Weapons. So as the astute listener will know, in 2001, the rights to Lethal Weapon lapsed. And so there were some Philly guys that decided to make what they deemed... Wow, it was so good that I thought it was just the same crew. No, Jordan, you're 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 a little bit off on that because these these guys from Philly decided to make Lethal Weapon not remake but le- make five, six, and seven because they always envisioned that they could make a trilogy after the trilogy with a sequel attached. That's how they deemed it. Did they do it? I think they did it. Um, so Lethal Weapon Five stars uh, uh, Dennis Reynolds as Murtaugh and Riggs. And then it, and Ronald McDonald as and not that Ronald Ronald McDonald's is the Philly yeah. guy uh, as Murtaugh and Riggs and Charlie Kelly miscellaneous yeah just to fill in um, Frank Reynolds as uh, what was that character's name I mean I don't know if we're supposed to even say his name okay it's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing I forgot <laughs> well and and you know what's what's kind of interesting about this this franchise is they do some things that are considered pretty. Pretty bad. We would agree with that. Yes. You know, they make some bad decisions. But then the seventh movie actually is like a reaction to those decisions. Yeah. So it's kind of like an interesting encapsulation of where Hollywood has been and where it's going. So uh, when did you first see <laughs> Lethal Weapon 5? I think I I think it was in college um, was when I became aware of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think about that time I'd seen one or two. Yeah. And I thought, well, let's just check this out. It's shorter than the other ones. Yeah, much shorter. I mean, we're talking like 20 minutes. Yeah. 15, actually, I think. Yeah. Um, but I th- I think there was a theatrical release. That's why we're covering it. Okay. Um, yeah, same for me. Same about the same time. I think you showed me this movie, funny enough. Really? Yeah. Wow. In a I, roundabout that way, you showed, it, in you showed it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lethal Weapon 5, um, do we want to talk about the plot really quick? Yeah. Before we're moving on to 6. Um, you have, you know, like the classic tropes of Murtaugh and Riggs. It is interesting that, uh, I mean, I mean, it's worth noting, and it'll come up, especially in Lethal Weapon 7, that Murtaugh is played by a white guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first white guy who plays him, Dennis Reynolds, he just puts on a mustache and does and talks a voice. like him. But... Uh, Later, halfway through the movie, which I could never quite figure out the reasoning behind this, um, they switch roles. Ronald McDonald and Dennis Well, you have to look at it as, it, it's. I think it's, you know, around their first movie and earlier project that they worked on. And, you know, when you're earlier in your artistic endeavors, not as confident in some areas, you think at a certain point, like, oh, maybe if I tried it, uh-huh. I can envision this in a way that I think you're starting to feel like you're lacking Let's just do a switcheroo and see see what happens. Yeah. And so they switch halfway through, and then Ronald McDonald decides to go full blackface. Yeah. Which is uh, not not great. Uh, it's not good. It's bad. It's bad. Fact. You can yeah. say it's bad. I, I can say it's bad. And uh, that that's part of why now finding this movie is really hard to find. It was yeah. It was almost like, do we even cover this because you don't see this anywhere? Um, because but we actually got to watch down since we had seen it before we watched the commentary. Yeah. Mac, Ch- Charlie and Dennis all, yeah. you know, talking about the movie. Yeah. I guess they stole some footage from this movie to, to put in the movie. So there, you know, there's a lot of controversial stuff. Well, it's very avant garde. Yeah. Well, that, that is one way to put it, but, uh, yeah, you know, you but have... it's bad. The, the, some choices that are made are straight up bad. Straight up Let's bad. Let's just 
be clear about that. I mean, you do have Frank Reynolds playing a Native American. Yeah. That's also not great. He's a he's a he's kind of an Italian Jersey white guy. And from the commentary, I found out that he was the... He was backing the movie He was backing the movie, yeah. Which might explain some scenes later in the movie that are among the most disgusting I've ever seen. Um, that inv- You know, usually in a movie... If there's any kind of love scene, it's, be, mm-hmm. you know, it's our main character. Like in Lethal Weapon 2. Yeah. A very long scene with yeah. Murtaugh. No. Riggs and uh, the South African lady. Yeah. Um, but no, in this one, they decided to, like I said, do a switcheroo. And they had our villain. Yeah. Uh, having this scene. With a and with a, a real life prostitute that they hired have, for this movie. You know, have your buckets ready to barf into. Yeah. Um, quite disgusting. Yeah. So, I mean, that's lethal weapon five, right? Well, they get the bad guy and they, they kill get, him at the end. <laughs> yeah. Electrocute him, yeah. which I guess he got actually electrocuted a little bit. And the commentary is what they said. He didn't know yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then years later, the same guys, I guess they still have the rights. I'm, I'm just surprised Warner brothers would allow something like this. Well, to it happen. seems like this Frank Reynolds character is a high roller. Yes, it does. Um, uh, and so they make Lethal Weapon 6. And they do something that I think we all thought could have happened in the original movies. At some point, Riggs and uh, Murtaugh's daughter getting married. <laughs> right. Which is a wild a little, story choice. Yeah, there's a weird always little... Always a little like uh, Murtaugh, I mean, they kiss on the mouth a couple yeah, times. Yeah, kind of like, the, did you just kiss my daughter? Yeah. His daughter definitely is like has a little crush on him, especially in the first movie. So I think in this movie... This uh, sixth one, they're like, well, let's explore that. What would happen? Um, again, bad choices are made. Yeah. Let's just get out in front of that. I mean, there is a scene in this movie where Ronald McDonald is in full blackface and body, and he's taking a shower, and the makeup is coming off of his body. <laughs> yeah. Really bad. Really bad. But also very poor taste and offensive. Yes. So bad on bad <laughs> on bad on bad because um I'm talking D Reynolds. D Reynolds, um who I guess is Dennis Reynolds' sister. Yeah. I think they're I think they said that, say that they're twins or something. I think they're related to Frank fun, maybe. Fun fact, yeah. Um she is also in full blackface and doing a, a different accent. She's doing a southern accent, which yeah. that character's not southern. She's no. from LA. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she ever saw the first ones. This is where it, you know, Lethal Weapon 5, it's got, it's still got a little charm, even though it's, you know, making some pretty bad decisions. Yeah. This one's a little like, what are we doing here? But this one is shot better. Hey, they've improved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to admit that I have to it's admit shot that. a yeah. little bit better. And in the last movie, um, Charlie Kelly's character was killed. And in this movie, it seems that he comes back. But, but he, no, he looks a, at a picture. Yeah. It's his twin. <laughs> yeah. And I think they didn't quite understand all the technology they were using because when they introduced that character, he's wearing a like neon green shirt. And right after this, there's a chase scene <laughs> with some green screen. I mean, everyone does it these yeah. days. Oh yeah. Um, but his shirt was part of the screen, part of the background. Yeah. But, but in classic rigs, uh, 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 uh status he is chasing after the motorcycle and they also they keep this consistent they did this in lethal weapon five and they did it in six uh Riggs it has an australian accent yeah which on the commentary uh, uh dennis mentioned that he he you know noticed that there's a little australian accent so he wanted to you know keep that going yeah so <laughs> which again makes me question are all of mel gibson's roles he has an oh, accent. and I should follow up on that. I looked up the big famous scene in Ransom uh, in between, uh, since we recorded Lethal Weapon 4, and he does not have an Australian accent in that scene. Haven't haven't watched the whole movie since, you know, the so last time I how do you think that it, works? Because, so, like, <sighs> I know that's later in his career, after these Lethal Weapon movies. I don't think not Ransom that much is later? after... Four at least. It might not. Really? It might even be before three. So do you think? So that's a Ron Howard movie. Yeah. Do you think he'd like talk to him about it? Well, it's 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 just because in the Lethal Weapon movies, it's always like slips. You know what I mean? It's, I know. I think it's so just they a just matter don't of care. It's it's a matter of him just slipping more. I I don't know. And and then maybe maybe it's a matter of you know in Ransom maybe he just worked on it more before doing the movie. Hmm. 
Interesting. Just an interesting thing. It is very weird. But yeah, Lethal Weapon 6, they they bring back to life the native Frank Reynolds again. And he, you know, fights him. They go after him. They they kill him again. But then they, they kill the shaman and they bring back the daughter to life before they kill the shaman. Mm-hmm. Um, and they overexplain a lot of stuff. Yeah. Ronald McDonald's very interested in overexplaining, which, which I don't think we need. Yeah. But I think maybe it's a response to in the other movies. Um, I mean, you and I, while watching them, were like, so what is happening? Yeah. Couldn't follow. Some yeah, right. And this one, you can follow a little bit more than some of the others. Yeah. Um, so then moving on to seven. So the version of this we watch was kind of like, because what happened with seven is they released lethal weapon seven, but then it actually was also released as a, um, documentary called white saviors. Mm-hmm. And so we watched, there's kind of a behind the scenes, uh, it's on Hulu where, where you can watch, um, you can watch this. I'll just call them like a gang, the gang making Lethal Weapon 7 and that whole experience. So that's the version that we watched this time around. Yeah. And so you see them making this movie. And, and what's interesting about it is they're go, they're going at it with, with this like. It, well, hold on. Okay. I mean, it's important to know. Okay. Don Cheadle made this movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the man was a director. Of yeah. any kind. I've just only seen him as an actor and known him as an actor. Well, I, I thought, yeah. I by, just by thought the it, end product, from my understanding, he is. I thought it was director. Donovan McNabb, but yeah. No, I guess Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle, okay. Not yeah. Donovan McNabb. And not Tiger Woods. And not Tiger Woods. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. But before it does get into Cheadle's hands, we see that crew who's made the yeah. five and six. Um, like you said, trying, it, it, in a lot, of way, a lot of ways, motivated to respond to the the criticism the, offes- that they face. the offensiveness of the other ones yeah because after six uh and and like they, they they took down you know five and six from like streaming services and stuff like that yeah. like it's very hard to find them and so with seven i think they were like oh my gosh it's gone i guess they had it like at the their public library as well and frank reynolds is really mad and they go, well, let's make a culturally sensitive one and kind of like apologize for what we did, but yeah. let's make Lethal Weapon 7. And seeing the behind the scenes, yeah, it seems like they're still pretty out of touch. Very out of touch, And yeah. are sure, you know, motivated to do things the right way, but not for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fascinating. So they're trying to do it. They This time, they decide not to be in the movie. Yes. Um. And uh, certainly not playing the black characters, which is a good choice. Yeah. But as they're making the movie, they're they're trying to make these different villains, and they're realizing in like all the people groups that they're choosing as villains, it's just like uh, maybe it maybe it should not be a, a people group because we don't want to ostracize anyone. Mm-hmm. So then they switch it to in the movie, they're the villain is like a, a tidal, tidal wave, wave, which is very unlethal weapon like, if you ask me. Yeah. Um. So. They do that, but that doesn't really work. And then they decide, wait a second, what are we doing? We're we're still being white people telling, you know, this story. Maybe we should have a black person tell the story. So they give it to um Don or not Donovan McNabb, um Don Cheadle. Uh, they give it to Don Cheadle, and he directs it. But what he directs is kind of a proto documentary called White Saviors about how they think that they're doing this wonderful thing and they're really not. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of clu- concludes with them being like, well, I guess we just need to make Lethal Weapon 8 and forget about all the political Which has not stuff. happened since. Yeah, so I'm curious if they will. Um, but yeah, that's, that's uh, I mean, I know we summed it up real quick. Well, like we said, they're short. They're short. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and uh, if, if you're real confused about this, just... Make sure and and write, you know, write, go on there and go Lethal Weapon 5, Philadelphia, and you can read all about it. It helps if you put the location. Yeah. I know it's confusing because the first four take place in L.A. Yeah. And not to say that these new ones don't take place in L.A., but they were shot in Philadelphia. It has to do with the people who got the rights. I think it was maybe a little bit cheaper for some reason to shoot it there. Yeah. So. Well, and, and it's sunnier there. I know it's sunny in L.A., yeah. but I guess. It's even sunnier in Philly. Yeah, it's, it's always sunny there, apparently. Yeah. So, um. Anyway, that we just wanted to kind of close the loop on Lethal Weapon. Yeah, and like we said, we it's just our our schedule is so jam packed that 
and looking and organizing and setting up the next slate of things. Yeah. We just didn't have another week to dedicate to Lethal Weapon. And honestly, I didn't want to. Right. As people know from listening to me talk about these, frankly, stupid movies. Well, so, okay. All right. So did you like any four, uh, five, six, and seven better than than uh, one, two, three, and four? That's the big question. I think I liked the... It, you know, I think the third movie is still the worst one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Easily. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Well, seven is terrible. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, but five and six are kind of fun, but it's not better than the other movies, you know? Okay. Um, but, but it's certainly interesting. And so as far as we know, I think now there's just two branching rights on this franchise because it sounds like Mel Gibson and Danny Glover are making Lethal Weapon yeah. five. And I think they're just going to pretend that five, six and seven never happened. Which, you know what? Probably for the best. I think it makes sense. But I think if you're, you know, if you're a fan of this podcast, you're a fan of fr- film uh, fri- film franchises, you're a fan of film, mm-hmm. you you might be interested in checking these out. Yeah. Just to have a more well-rounded education on franchises as a whole and how they can mutate. Yeah. Yeah. Talk but also about just, it. yeah, how film works in general. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Uh, on Friday, we start our new series on Planet of the Apes. So, um, yeah, do you got anything else to say? I think that's about it. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye.